first of all, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Thank you. It's great to have you here. My now, pleasure. Now, you, your particular research, we're, we're, we're looking at uh, sexual violence in, uh, in India. Tell us what you're most interested in. I'm looking at sexual violence from an altogether different angle. I'm looking at what kinds of discourses are being produced by this kind of spectacular international attention to sexual violence in India. And when I did a sort of discourse analysis of uh, what's being written about in newspapers, I realized that young men from urban villages in Delhi are being demonized as savages, brutish, quite in contradistinction to the middle-class suburban Indians who live in Delhi. Um, and I realized that um, to understand sexual violence in India, one needs to there, therefore go into deeper materialities of the situation. Uh, and once I looked into the history of Delhi, I realized that Delhi as a city has been crafted by acquiring village lands. And this has really, um, 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 the, the, the magnitude or scale of this acquisition has increased tenfold in the last decade. And the state plans to double the urbanized area of Delhi in the next decade, a very short period of time, which is putting, um, which is forcing young men to confront a very precarious future. They're suddenly pushed from an agricultural economy and they're made to confront a service economy, an economy for which they don't have the stubborn disposition, they don't have the education. The manufacturing sector never really took off in Delhi. So I'm trying to understand, in the context of these deep material transformations, how, is, how are male bodies gendered? Or, or how, are, how, how does gender formation occur in dialogue with these larger transformations in the political economy? Well, do you, what do you think, uh, but this is, as you said, this is a process that is just getting going in, 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 in many ways. So, so what do you think the, the future holds here? As, as I see it, the future is very grim because think about it. I mean, Delhi has currently has, uh, its urbanized area is about 700 square kilometers. The state plans to double it. Right. So it plans to acquire about 700 square kilometers of village lands. Now imagine the millions of people who will be affected by it. The millions of people who will be pushed into what I'm calling a very, very precarious future. And I think these are urban contestations, as I'm seeing it, are only going to exacerbate until and unless you know, um, uh, the state finds some way to uh, rehabilitate these people. Right, but what, but, what but that's, that alone is not the solution either. Right. So, so, so what is the solution? What can be done? Because I would imagine that the, the people that you're talking about are not high up on on the political agenda are not high up on uh, people's list of to-dos. I, I think one of the solutions is that at least uh, these uh, communities that are exposed to the instabilities of the markets. One of the things that has happened is that private builders have been allowed to enter the land market. So private builders today can negotiate with these farmers directly. And there, many anthropologists are arguing they are really manipulating these farmers into selling their land. So I, I, I think the state needs to protect these communities from the shocks of the market and privatization. Um, so this kind of what anthropologists call neoliberalization of the economy. I think that the state needs to go forward much more cautiously with withdrawing from arenas in which uh, in times past it was protecting people and communities. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate that. Thank you for joining us.